Hello, in the last video, we saw how we could take a table like this, um, extract some key pieces from it, and then generate a dendrogram. Um, I want to uh, back up a step and, and kind of go a little bit earlier in this chain of, of operations and say, hey, if I start with a tree like this, can I generate these pieces and then generate this? So I'm going to start with a tree this time. So I'm a little bit farther from uh, my final goal. So I'm going to head back to my notebook. And I have the skeleton of a node class. So this is going to be some review from earlier in the semester. Um, this is going to be a binary tree. So my node um, objects are going to have possibly a left or right child. And then there's going to be some new features. So I'm, I can only have zero or two children for this. That's not true of binary trees in general, but it's going to be true of this tree. I may have a distance between my two, two children. If I'm a leaf node, I may have some data. Otherwise, I will not. And so there's some to do here. I haven't really set much up yet, and so I'm going to do that. Um, what else do I have here? I have some drawing functions and some wrapper functions that are going to be used so I can view, uh, view it as I'm drawing. And then I'm going to have a couple functions that I'm going to work on along the way. So down here is how I will create it. So I'm going to say I have these three leaf nodes, and they each have the names A, B, and C, and they have data that is pulled from my data data frame from before. So if I head way back up here, I have this data right here. And this is going to be what I'm going to have for my three leaf, my A, B, and C um, leaves. All right, so I'm going to have that. So for those, I just pass in a name and the data. Um, then I'm going to have some non-leaf nodes that are going to have children. And I'm going to call those cluster one and cluster zero. Um, cluster one has child nodes A and B. And cluster zero has child nodes um, this one right here, and then also C, right? So cluster zero will contain cluster one. Um, I'm hard coding some distances from now. Eventually we're gonna go back and see how we figure out that as well. So right now when I view it, um, what happens when I just put this down here at the end? It tries to use wrapper SVG if it can. And right now it's just seeing this one uh, node instead of seeing the whole tree. The reason being that I haven't done anything with my children yet. I'm passing in what the children are, are but I'm not using them. Okay, so what I'm going to say is uh, if left is not equal to none, then what? Then that means I'm a non leaf. Okay, otherwise, then I'm a leaf. Maybe I'm just going to uh, leave that as leaf and non leaf. Okay, and so if I'm a, a, a non leaf, that means I have children, and so I should be able to say self.children.append left and self.children.append right. Sometimes we've seen before instead of having a, a children attribute for binary tree, sometimes we'll have a left attribute and a right attribute. Um, even though it's a binary tree, I may represent this as a list because it just makes it easier to loop over it um, in, in the future. I guess I'm just going to append both of those. Um, otherwise, I don't really have to do, uh, do much, right? I've, I've kind of recorded all this information. So I filled in the children. But there's all this checking as well. So for example, I have this rule up here that there have to be zero or, or one children. So if I know I have a left child, then I might want to assert that right is not equal to none. So I can basically make sure that when somebody's creating this, they don't pass in some garbage. And really, when I'm talking about somebody, I mean myself later. If I'm passing in garbage later, I'd like to immediately know before I kind of have some horrendous bug to try to fix. Um, what else do I know? I know that if... Um, I know that if this left was uh, passed in, then I know that the data should be um, should be none, right? Because if I'm not a leaf, well, then I don't have data. Only children have, uh, or only leaves have data. I may say, instead of this, I may say is, because if I do equal equal um, on a NumPy array, which this is, then I know I'm going to try to do an element-wise instead of checking the whole object. I could do that, right? If I have left set, then this had better be set, and this had better be set, and uh, and um, and great. So that makes sense. If I'm down here, so that means leaf was not set. I should assert the opposite. That assert that the right equals none, and assert that data is not none. And and so that'll make sense then. So I've kind of done some checking to make sure that uh, this is all going to work out well. So I can erase that to do. Let me just see if this works, right? The main thing I did 
Besides a bunch of checking, was appending these two children. And so my hope is that if I run this now, I may see the whole hierarchy. And uh, and indeed I do. There's my hierarchy of, of nodes. Um, so that's great. Okay, so my main thing that I'm working towards is I want to be able to do this draw, draw hierarchy. That's going to have my dendrogram. Uh, to be able to create the dendrogram, it is going to be helpful if I can um, if I can first just get a list of all the nodes, um, uh, all of the nodes that I have in my tree. And so that's why I have this fill node list. What I'm going to do with fill node list, I'm going to pass in an empty list. And this is going to recursively go through and try to fill up that list with all the nodes in the tree. If I want to, I can filter down um, to have just nodes that either have two children or just have zero children. If I leave it as none, that means I want all the nodes in the tree. Okay, so let me think a little bit about this. I am going to, first I guess I could do this. I could say um, nodes is a list and I could append myself, right? I could do that. Now, do I always want to do that? It depends. If I'm filtering, then I better make sure I have the right number of, of, of nodes. So I could say if self, well, I could say if length of self.children equals that, then I'm going to append myself. <coughs> so that's one possibility. Other possibility is if somebody put none, then they just always want it. So I could just say if this equals none, Right. If, if this is true, well, then I immediately add myself no matter what. If this is false, then I check the part after the or, which is, well, do I have the right number of children to be added to this list? I could have that. And uh, let me just try that before I go too far. So um, if I say something like um, nodes equals this, empty list, and I say fill node list, like that, I may say nodes. I could look at my nodes right here. And, um, and 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 my apologies, right? So what do I have to pass in here? So myself is actually, right, the way I call methods is like that, right? So this x is going to go to self. This nodes is going to go to here. Child count will default to none. So I do that. And so right now I'm adding myself, like this right here, but I'm not adding any of my, any, any of my children. Okay, so let me, let me add my children. Well, how can I do that? I can loop over my children. And I can ask them to do the same thing. I can ask them to do exactly what I did here. Right, so I'm gonna say C dot fill node list. And I want my child to fill the same list I'm filling. And whatever I got for child count, I want them to use that same same filter. So I can do that now. I can say I can edit all the nodes here. Just for my application later that I'm working towards, um, in terms of uh, I'm gonna be using this to build that linkage matrix. Later, I may want to put all the children in uh, before the parents. So I'm just going to switch this around. So I'm going to do the recursive um, adds there before I actually add myself. So I'm going to have these um, children here uh, before their parent, which is cluster one. All right, so children first. Okay, so I, I've built that whole thing. I should test it a little bit, right? I, I should be able to say, I just want the nodes where node count equals zero um, or child count. I want the ones where child count equals zero, and then I get the leaves. Or I can say I want it where it's two, and I get the non-leaves. <coughs> um, of course, remember that this is a special binary tree where you either have zero or two children, so that would always be empty. Okay, so I've implemented that. Let me just go back to here. And now I can use this for this draw hierarchy uh, uh, method, right? Because what I want to do is I want to go through and I want to find all the leaf labels and I want to find uh, the linkage matrix for the non-leafs. Right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to have uh, leafs and non-leafs like that. And I can use this thing on both of them. I can say uh, self.fill node list of my leafs. And I can um, add all the nodes to the non-leafs as well. And so I'm gonna have to do some filtering here. I have to say child count equals something, and then down here as well. And, and so if I'm looking for leafs, that means that they have zero children. If I'm looking for non-leafs, that means they have, have two children. Okay, let me just print both of these things first. Leafs and non-leafs is a first step. So I'm just gonna say this, I'm gonna say draw 
hierarchy. Great, so I'm, I'm separating the leaves from the non-leaves. The, the next thing I'm going to have to do, if I look back at, uh, at the picture that I had before, is that these numbers here, these left and right numbers, uh, were indexes that were referring to um, other nodes up here. Right, so like this is 0, 1, 2. That's where these numbers are coming from right here. And so what I may want to do is I may want to assign every node um, in my list an index, right, so that I can uh, refer to them. Right, so I'm going to loop over these two lists I have now and I'm going to assign them all an index. And, and just the way it's structured or the way the linkage matrix is expected to be is that the smallest indexes go to the leafs and then the biggest indexes go to the, um, the non-leafs. And so I'm going to head down here. And, uh, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say, I'm going to loop over everything first. I'm just going to say for um, node in leafs. Let me just print, print each node. Try that first, looping over all of those. I, I could loop over non-leafs as well. If I want to, I can loop over leafs plus this. What does this do? This concatenates both my lists, so ultimately I'm looping over both of them at the same time, just like that. Okay, um, now I want to ultimately say something like this. I want to say something like um, node.index equals something, right? I want to um, assign this one 0, this one 1, this one 2. Different ways I could do this. I could have an i here, and then I could say like i plus equals 1 down here. A little bit cumbersome. Um, there's a technique in Python where if I want to loop over both the values and the indexes, I can you say enumerate. And so if I say enumerate, then I may have both an index as the first piece and a node as the second piece. And so I can just pass this in right like this. And so I'm going to do that, and you get all of those. And let me just check then after I'm done here, what is um, say x dot index? That would be four. What is y dot index? That would be three. What is a dot index? Zero. So I've assigned them all an index, which I'm going to be able to use to generate that linkage matrix because that's how I, I really say, well, what is my child I'm referring to? Okay, so let's think about this. I want to loop over, now that I've assigned all these indexes, I want to loop over all my non-leafs. I'm going to say for node in non-leafs, I may have to add something to that linkage matrix, right? So I'm going to maybe just call it links right here. And, uh, and I may say something like links.append, and I know that thing has four columns. And I, I realize I'm hard coding the positions, but this is part of the specification, right? The linkage matrix has to have something at position zero, something at position one, so on and so forth. And, and so the thing that it has to have uh, at position one is the left index, and then at position, I'm sorry, at position zero, left index, position one, right index, and then it's maybe the distance. And then finally, I'm going to have uh, the node count. Okay, for the node count, even though I'm required to put it there, I happen to know that the dendro dendrogram ignores it. So I'm going to ignore it too. So I'm going to leave it like that. Um, when I have a non-leaf, let me just look at how I created this before. Uh, when I have a non-leaf, I pass in a distance between my two children. Right. So here I'm passing in a, uh, a distance between these two. And so I can just say, well, um, for this particular node that's not a leaf, I know it's a parent, and I can just say, well, what, what distance does it have between my two children? Right? And then here, what do I have? I have my uh, left child and my right child, which I know to be children. Remember that I, instead of having a left and right attribute, I just had a list, and then uh, the thought being that that can be my left and that can be my right. This is getting very close, but remember that I can't put um, an object in that linkage matrix. I just have to put an index. I'm going to say dot index, dot index. Let me print this, these links off so far. So I'm going to do this. And my linkage matrix looks like this. Maybe I'd like to convert it to um, a NumPy array, right? So I'm going to say uh, links equals NumPy array of links. And then I remember from before, um, uh, that this needs to be um, floats. All right, so I'm going to do that, and now I can see down here, this is my linkage matrix. And I could try to create a dendrogram from that. So I could say a dendrogram of my links, 
and I run that, and now I get that picture, right? I can see that, um, I guess I have these three leafs down here. Um, A and B are distance three apart, and then and then the distance between that first cluster and, uh, and C is distance of four. Okay, so I'm, I've done most of the work here, but down here, I'd like to actually know what these are. Instead of saying zero, one, two, I'd like to say something like A, B, C. Okay, so I'm gonna say labels equals something. And, and what is that something? Well, just like I build the linkage matrix from the non-leafs, I can get the labels from here. But let me actually go back to the slides and look at the picture here, right? So I just built this thing, which is the minimum thing I need for a dendrogram. I'd like to also have this here so I can put these along my x-axis. Right, so these are from my leaf nodes and it's just that name attribute of each leaf node. Okay, so I'm gonna say leaf labels is gonna be a list. I'm gonna say for node in leafs, I'm gonna say leaf labels dot append node dot name. Just like that. And then down here, I'm gonna say my leaf labels. I run that. And now I actually get a picture right, where I can see, well, those are my three uh, leaf nodes, which correspond to the original data down there on the x-axis. And then I can see the relationships between them uh, based on these cluster nodes. There's a cluster node here, and then there's a cluster node um, up here. So I will leave this video there. Next time I'm gonna see, well, given that raw data, how can I actually build um, that tree?